Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and today's topic we are going to talk about the diseases of salivary gland. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back to another 5 in 5 series where we cover each topic under 5 headings in 5 minutes and today's topic is sialolithiasis. Now what is sialolithiasis? It is the presence of sialoliths which are the calcified stone and if they are present in the salivary gland or the duct of the salivary gland we call it sialolithiasis and before we get started make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos. So, how does this happen? There is a formation of nidus. Now, nidus is formed from the mucine, protein, desquamated epithelial cells as well as the bacteria and then there is a lamellar crystallization in the concentric rings and due to this there is precipitation of calcium salt. Now, this sialolith which has formed, it start increases in the size. As it start increases in the size, layer after layer is adding up and thereby it grows like a tree in the concentric rings. So, this the growth happens and there is a sialolith which is a calcified stone. Now, it is going to obstruct the salivary gland or the duct of the salivary gland. Now, see. A sialolith is going to block either the duct or the salivary gland. Which salivary gland? Now, it mostly blocks the or obstructs the submandibular salivary gland and its duct which is the Wharton's duct. So, this is the most common. Now, small sialolith or the microlith, they can be expelled with the saliva. But large sialolith, if they obstruct the duct, they are going to stop the salivary secretion. So what happens? Um, now first question is, you will be asking me why only submandibular gland? Why only the Wharton duct? Because there are multiple sharp bends or curvature that traps the mucin plugs, that traps the debris and therefore this debris and these mucin plugs will form the nidus and therefore it will form the sialolith. Also there is a viscous nature of the submandibular saliva. So uh, the uh, uh, submandibular salivary gland is going to secrete the viscous saliva because of the high mucin con uh, uh, content because of the high viscosity of the saliva. So there is adhesion of these foreign particles and they can easily form the nidus and because of the high mucin, because of the high viscosity, now the mucin content, because of that, nidus can be formed and then the nidus calcified and form the sialoliths. Also, high calcium content. The submandibular gland, it contains the high calcium and the position of gland is such that it increases the chance of slowing of the saliva. So, there is status. So, in the duct, the saliva is, it, it is laid down. So, saliva is there present in the Wharton's duct for a long period of time because there is a slow, there is a status, uh, status of saliva. Saliva, it becomes stagnant uh, in the duct. So, that is, that is the reason that because of high mucin, all these reasons together, they form the submandibular gland more prone to sialoliths. Now, sialoliths are the calcified stone again. So, these are like a stones which are blocking the duct. So, what happens if the stone is blocking the duct? The patient will complain of pain, discomfort and see, this submandibular salivary gland, it is going to stimulate the unstimulated saliva, right? But the stimulated saliva is via the parotid gland. Now, we know that parotid gland is the second most common gland which causes the sialolith. So, what happens when the patient, especially at meals, when the patient is eating, there will be uh, this is because of the salivary secretion, see what happens when the patient is uh, eating, having meals or when the patient is salivating. So due to the occlusion of the saliva, because of the pulling, drawing or stinging action, if there is complete obstruction, then the patient will complain of severe and stabbing pain during 
uh, the eating while eating the food or during any sour food or if we stimulate the saliva with a lemon drop candy so if we are putting few drops of lemon if we are stimulating the saliva and if because of the obstruction sialolith there is obstruction then the patient will complain of pain because the saliva wants to come out but because of the duct obstruction it cannot come out so there will be pain with the patient will feel there will be uh, enlargement of the salivary gland and the salivary gland will be firm but still movable and we have to do the bimanual palpation with the fingers with both hands and if in case of submandibular then it me then there will be swelling medial to the inferior border of the mandible if there is the parotid gland then there will be swelling near to the ear so how do we diagnose it it see for the submandibular sialolith we can diagnose it with the standard occlusal radiograph okay and it will detect it will disclose the calcification which are present at the floor of the mouth but exact location we can tell via the lateral jaw films and if we want to detect the parotid stones then we can do it with the help of opg but sometimes the radiograph fail to disclose fail to tell that sialolith are present uh, the reason can be because of the superimposition of the stones with the mandible during the radiograph so because of the superimposition of two x rays we cannot tell that this is stone and it can merge with the mandible so we cannot e exactly tell also if the sialolith is not completely calcified then also we cannot tell right so for that we do the sialography so sialography we retro we do the retrograde injection of the radio opaque dye within the duct system and then we take the radiograph so it is the method of detecting the salivary stones within the gland and also within the duct it can tell so this is the best method to tell the uh, if it there is any sialolith present so sialolith which contains majorly calcium phosphate see there is a composition 75% calcium phosphate calcium carbonate 12% and then 5% salt soluble salt are there organic matter is there 5% 3% water is there but that is not um, that is irrelevant uh, we just need to remember that sialolith composed of a cellular amorphous 75% of calcium phosphate you just need to remember that it contains the calcium phosphate 75% so how do we treat it we, the small stones which are present in the distal part of the duct so when we do the digital ma manipulation then we can remove it through the orifice but in case of large uh, duct is uh, in case of large stone is present then we have to remove the stone with a surgical procedure so we can i we can remove the stone as well as some part of the gland and we call it the silo adin adenectomy and also if in case of very large stone is present and we cannot remove it so we can do the lithotripsy lithotripsy is a non invasive technique in which we disintegrate we dissolve the large stone so this is how we are going to treat the sialolithiasis so guys this is about i hope that you have enjoyed the video so if you have enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description box below to support me on patreon as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i will see you soon in the next video